biggest thing going on right now in sports is the NBA Finals, and the Nuggets dominate in game one last night. And while I have mostly loved these NBA playoffs throughout so far, because it has been about what's going on on the court and not about protest or anything going on off the court, it's been more about the basketball. I've enjoyed that part of it, Charlie, but I've got to be completely honest here. Even I, and I love Jamal Murray, I love Nikola Jokic, I like this Nuggets team and how they play, I'm having a hard time getting overly hyped up about a Nuggets Heat NBA Finals as I actually watch it last night on TV. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to watch the games, but I'm not, you know, it's not, it's not the sexiest of matchups in terms of franchises going head to head. What is your interest meter in this series so far? You know, it's an interest meter in the fact that it's the first finals appearance for the Nuggets. Uh, You know, you got to feel happy for the head coach. You got to feel good for Nikola Jokic. It was funny. I was even listening to the broadcast last night and they were reminiscing about when he was drafted and the fact that he, you know, had some, some downsides that were critiqued. And, you know, when they were talking about his upside, they were like, yeah, maybe not too much upside for this guy. And it's like, boy, were they wrong. Uh, So, you know, it's, 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 it's a nice story. Uh, Jamal Murray, his first finals appearance. And then, on, you know, for the side of the Heat, I just think the Heat are such a spectacular team. There's so many players on that squad that I love uh, the personalities of. I love the skill sets of. And the fact that they were the eight seed now making it to the finals when Jimmy Butler predicted they were going to be in the same position last year. There's a lot of cool individual stories as this finals pertains, but I'm kind of with you. There's a little bit of the the luster that comes along with the finals. It just doesn't seem to be present this time around, especially last night when it was such a blowout. I mean, I was barely even paying any attention to the screen in the last quarter uh, because it was like the, you know, the Nuggets were running away with the game early on. So I hope the series does not continue in that direction because I like good games. I don't care if I don't have any interest in the teams. We like close and competitive games and we did not get that last night. Yeah, we like stories, too. Uh, We like heroes. We like villains. We like all those things about sports. Pretty cool. We like dynamic duos. Jokic and Murray became the third duo in NBA history to score over 20 points and have over 10 assists in an NBA Finals game in the same NBA Finals game. The other two duos, Magic Johnson and James Worthy and Jordan and Pippen. So not bad company there for Jokic and Murray in game one of the NBA Finals. And oh, by the way, Nikola Jokic averaging a triple-double so far in these playoffs, which is pretty cool to see a guy that well-rounded. And, and, you know, when you talk about making history, Jokic with that performance joined Jason Kidd as now being the only two players to make their NBA Finals debut with a triple-double. So not too shabby, huh? Not at all. And uh, a lot of stories going on around Major League Baseball right now. And, And a lot of them... I feel like involve backlash. There's one move made that angers someone. They speak Mm -hmm. out against it. Then something changes. Then someone else on the other side gets mad. And it's sort of this tennis match going back and forth. Charlie, you noticed something yesterday with Major League Baseball uh, in their logo that changed for Pride Month. And then it changed again. What can you tell us? Yeah, so yesterday was the kicking off of Pride Month, as everybody knows. And to start off the month, they had the trans flag in the background or uh, the pride flag. Um, to be honest, like, I'm not sure which one it is. It's I don't one know of the- either. <laughs> it, it almost looks like we just talked about the Nuggets. It looks like the old 80s Nuggets logo yeah. in the background <laughs> like of Major League it, Baseball. It used to look like what we just, you know, Roy G. Biv, what we used to learn in uh, kindergarten growing up. Yep. And now, you know, it's taking on a whole new meaning. Um, but yes, yeah, so you could see that was the the symbol yesterday. The logo then today changed. They took away the pride flag in the background. And that's because players are just sick and tired of being used as walking billboards for the left's propaganda and their politics. They're here to play the game. They're not politicians. It's unfair to make them hand over their values and represent a, you know, a, a movement, an agenda that they do not correlate themselves with. So uh, I think it was a good move on the MLB. I'm sure they would have gotten a lot of slack had they kept that up. But I think there's some rumblings, a lot of which I don't think we've even begun to hear about. I know we've kind of been getting inklings of it, but I bet there's a lot more going on behind the scenes as to how upset a lot of these players are. And they've had enough of it. I mean, just because they play for the MLB doesn't mean that they should be forced to debase themselves. 
Yeah, and not only that, you know, it's it's so odd to see leagues and teams use players and coaches as pawns for virtue signaling, right? I mean, that's yeah. – I think even if, you know, people uh, in Major League Baseball saw Clayton Kershaw's comments – about it he's like look I'm I'm open to anyone coming out to the the park right he's a Christian he's like that's that's the Christian way I'm not sitting here and trying to debase a group of people or anything but when you start debasing us that becomes an issue and we're we're just sick and tired of it I, I do think we've reached a bit of a turning point with that where now players are speaking out more freely yeah. against these things Charlie tell me what you think about my take that I've I've used on this show a lot but if I were ever a sports owner Okay. My stance is that I stand for nothing. I am about the team. I am about putting the best product on the field. I am about helping out the fans. I sell tickets to anyone who wants to come to games and acknowledge the rules of the park or the arena or the stadium or whatever team I own because you only get in trouble when you try to acknowledge everything and be about everything. And it's so much better when teams are just about the team and the sport, and we've seen it go, go so crazy oh my gosh. out of this world in recent years against that. Yeah, well, I think when you say you stand for nothing, I think that's standing for a lot. To have a sports organization that's successful and gives people what they want, and that's to escape from the real world, which right now is just full of insane politics. I mean, that is giving the fans the best package you possibly ever could. So I think, you know, if there's an opening on a sports team, guys, I know somebody. I know a guy, I can put you in touch. I can help broker this deal chat if you want. Um, But yeah, I think that a lot of people throughout history we've seen, they turn to sports as an escape, right? That's they, they want to unwind. They want to kick back. They don't want to think they just want to enjoy watching their favorite players, watching a good game, having a beer, eating a hot dog, whatever it is you will. And right now that's not what they get. They're confronted with so many you know, forms of propaganda, uh, mostly from the left. Mm-hmm. And it's just a little sickening. I mean, we all we saw a lot of it kind of come to fruition in the bubble, um, you know, in the NBA. That's like when things really started getting very like in your face, like instead of the players having the names on their jerseys, which, you know, we've never seen them swap out names for social justice phrases, but suddenly that was the status quo and writing things in the end zone and writing things on the sidelines. It's just, it got to be a little too much where you even saw, who was it? Um, Who was it? Uh, One of the, you know, all-time greats in the NBA says, I don't even watch the NBA anymore because it's gotten too politically driven for my taste. Phil Uh, Jackson, I think, said that. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I I just think it's gotten to a place that's unhealthy. And uh, sports is a lot of things, but politics does not need to be, you know, in that same realm totally with you and speaking of insane politics uh a move that I, you know me as chad withrow hypothetical sports team owner I, I wouldn't engage in this chad withrow hypothetical head of espn i'm not engaging this but charlie they had a very unique way to signal in pride month where they're doing a ceremonial raising of a trans flag uh, on the espn campus you worked at espn and right. if espn bosses came to espn employees and said we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance every morning, you know, buy an American flag and have an American flag raising. I feel like people at ESPN would find that objectively hilarious, right? That, that we're going to do like an elementary school start to the day. Uh, this story to me is objectively hilarious that ESPN is doing this. Just looking from the outside in, you were inside that building. You work there. What do you think when you see this story? I mean, I just think it's like, I just think get a life. I mean, there's, this is just seems to be everyone is pulling the same moves out. Oh, we got to raise the trans flag. We got to hold pride events. It's like, listen, I understand you want to, you know, make sure that you're known as being in an accepting workplace and tolerant of everybody. But why do we need to talk about people's sexual preferences and make it a scene? I mean, we're at work here. Why do you know? I'm not talking about my sex life, but somehow raising a flag to represent others' sex lives is appropriate. And on that same token, I think that the fact that they have, and we're going to get more into it later, uh, but one of their most valuable talents uh, just has been speaking out lately more about 
uh, the transgendered athletes entering into the world of women's sports, and they don't so much as say a word about it, don't address it, don't defend her, yet a couple days later, they're going to raise the trans flag. You ask me, pretty clear where they stand on this topic. Yeah, and let's get into that, because I know we're going to talk with Tim Brando coming up, who had some thoughts on Twitter about it as well, but you mentioned it there, Charlie. Sam Ponder uh, sends out a few tweets in support of Riley Gaines, in support of, of what I think is a very basic knowledge of women's sports and fairness is that you know biological women should be competing against biological women that's the way it's always been that's the way it should be it infringes on title nine when you start talking about the possibility of scholarships being taken away from female athletes also she takes what is a stance that probably 90 to 95 percent of americans agree with and nancy r Moore of the U of usa today writes a hit piece column calling sam ponder a bigot saying that she's masking bigotry with what she is saying. And, Charlie, you mentioned it, but it's silence from ESPN. Well, actually, not complete silence because Sarah no. Spain of ESPN liked a tweet that was promoting that, that column. What do you make of all of this and, and where everyone stands right now in the lack of defense for someone like Sam Ponder? So, first of all, ESPN is quick to jump to employees' defenses in a lot of – other different cases. You look at Mina Kimes. Uh, it was several months ago. There was some Boston radio personality who took a dig at her and referred to her in some derogatory term. And ESPN very quickly came to her defense saying, this is not appropriate. We stand with Mina, blah, 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 which is great. They should do that. They should stand up for their talent if they're being dragged by especially listen fans are one thing you can't really control what the trolls say on twitter but if there's another media personality coming after one of espn's employees espn 1000 percent has a responsibility to say something and defend their employee so in this case you have nancy would you say r mark i've been calling her armor all week i guess it doesn't uh, really matter i, 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 I really, probably churched really, it up a little bit too much charlie really i think you're right yeah is. she's uh she's a nobody uh to most people uh except maybe in her own home so, you know, she decides to write an 800-word hit piece on Sam Ponder solely because, like you said, she has some common sense and said that this is not fair to women. We need to preserve women's sports. I mean, of all people, Sam Ponder knows women's sports. She's been working in the sports world for so long. Uh, she's ultra-talented. She's married to an athlete. I mean, if you're asking for an expert opinion, I would say Sam Ponder is up there with the expert opinions. Uh, but ESPN, not a word, not a word. They declined comment, which just to me seems like such a cop out because I think that if they were to defend her, they know they would get some backlash from the woke mob, right? And that's who everybody is so scared of right now. Everyone bending over backwards to accommodate what really is a very tiny minority of people. The craziest of people, because even the LGBTQ community as a whole, I don't think identify with this small group of lunatics. Uh, so I think that it's really sad that ESPN didn't say anything. But also, remember, during Women's Month, they did put a tribute out for Leah Thomas, transgendered athlete, who stole countless opportunities from women, women as we know. So they actually haven't been silent. They haven't spoken out directly, but their actions show us what side they're on. Well, and the sad reality about it, Charlie, and I agree with everything you're laying out there, is that when you look at ESPN or a lot of major corporations right now, and we can call it woke or whatever we want to, but what goes against Sam Ponder in this is that she is a pretty blonde white woman. And if the argument is seen between pretty blonde white woman and the trans community, regardless of who's right or wrong or who has merit and who doesn't. And in this case, it's all on Sam Ponder's side. She has the merit. She has the logical argument in this whole deal. Nancy Armour or Armour or whatever, however you want to pronounce it, she doesn't, right? But if we're going to defend someone, it's not about the argument. It's about the optics. And the optics are we don't want to be seen as anti-trans. So mm -hmm. even if Sam Ponder's right, and Nancy Armour is wrong. Nancy Armour is the virtuous one because she is standing up for the rights of the trans community. And here's this pretty blonde white woman over here. Uh, we don't really care about her even if she's right because we can't be seen as anti-trans. And I it, think it that's also, I think that's sad personally. It is it is sad. And also when you look at all of the work that ESPN has put in, especially I would say in the last two years, to help to elevate and and bring more eyeballs to women's sports, like the uh, 
women's NCAA championship. Uh, they, or was it, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. Iowa um, and, and LSU, watched, yeah. Yeah, most watched game of all time. You know, and they made sure to put that on a platform and promote it and put big name talent on it. Um, like L Duncan, for example, they pulled off 6 p.m. Sports Center to work the NCAA women's tournament because they wanted to put their top talent in this area so that they could help to get it some momentum. Yep. So it's like, okay, on one hand, you're trying to really pump up women's sports and bring the eyeballs to it that it deserves, you know, cause you have some ultra talented athletes and you want these women to feel like, okay, we're getting the same opportunities as men. But on the flip side, you're doing nothing when you see the landscape of women's sports is being destroyed by the fact that transgendered athletes in a lot of cases are now being able to compete in that area. Spot on. Look, I coach my daughter's softball team, and I, we're watching right now the Women's College World Series softball uh, on ESPN. I think they do a terrific job when they're covering the games, when they're showing the games. I, I enjoy watching softball, especially now that I coach it. It's a fun, fast-paced game, so that part of it is working, but when you willfully ignore this other part of it, and not just willfully ignore it, but go out of your way to celebrate what's going on with Leah Thomas, the way you had mentioned, Charlie, I have a problem with that. And yeah. I think most people that support women's athletics would have a, a problem with that as well.